good to have you. Uh, so the ERC has a budget which is very large. It's over 30 billion euros for 2000-2020. Okay? And you focus on excellence in research and you succeeded extremely well. And we're of course wondering what is the recipe for this? How do you do that? It was a long uh, struggle by the scientific community to get the uh, ERC up. And actually one of the uh, requests by the scientific community was really that to have a program within the programs of the European Commission which would be based strictly on the scientific quality. So it was really uh, from day one, uh, one thing that uh, scientists wanted. And uh, to achieve that, actually two steps were very important. Uh, the first one was the fact that the governance of the program is given to the scientific council, which is something which was uh, unusual for the European Commission and actually not uh, necessarily well accepted by everybody, but now it's uh, in place. And so that was the first uh, thing. And then the uh, next thing which, was, uh, which happened while the ERC was growing, it started uh, at a modest budget, but now it reached uh, basically the budget we have now, which is typically 1.6 billion euro per year. Uh, which is uh, that uh, really we managed to attract the very best scientists to participate in the evaluation, which was a non-trivial uh, thing, but there was the commitment of the scientific council from, from the first day. And actually, uh, I'm very pleased as a president to talk to members of the panels and all of them, uh, although as usually they are not well paid for that, but uh, what they find is really it's a fantastic intellectual challenge to have uh, to be confronted with a very ambitious projects because we push people to submit projects to be ambitious but also to be confronted with also high level scientists so i think we managed to keep the interest of people with of, of course the uh, feeling and uh, i think the uh, correct feeling that they are funding very high quality research that also they are willing to discuss that up to the end because the success rate is not so high it's about 10 to 11 percent we hope to improve it, but for the moment it's a bit difficult because there are lots of uh, people apply with a very good project. So this is the situation and how it has been achieved. And um, so I hope we can continue this way. As you know, at, at the moment, start the discussion about the so-called midterm review because the seven-year uh, pro program is really rediscussed in the middle. And I hope we can uh, get out of this uh, without uh, being uh, cut, which you never know. Well, when you start discussing budgets, you never know what is the outcome. There's always a risk when it comes to budgets. And, and what's interesting here, I think, is really how you've been able to become this really trademark for good quality, which for, for those of you who don't know, if you get a grant from the ERC, you, you hold that high and you you know, show everybody because that's really a grant for quality and uh, no matter who you are, you, you have that with you and you can keep going. So that's been very important for a lot of researchers, I think. That's what I hear from them, so yeah. it's a very good news all the time mm -hmm. and uh, it's uh, actually one of the privilege of my position is to meet so many of these people, particularly many young people, because as you know from uh, the first day, the Scientific Council decided that two-thirds of the budget should go to younger people. So two-thirds of people who get ERC grants are between 30 and 40, which is, I think, uh, very important for the future of uh, research in Europe. Uh, now, you focus on excellent, not regional politics. Yes. Would you say, are there certain countries that you perceive as the best with regards to enhancing the strategies for, for having good environments for researchers? Actually, um, maybe two, this question has two aspects. One aspect is, of course, that if you are serious about quality, then you should not uh, mix your arguments or your criteria with other criteria. So in the end, uh, if you get some kind of a photography of uh, where the research is most active, where the most uh, ambitious researchers are welcome, and of course, it's not a uniform picture of Europe. And uh, we know in the long run, this could be politically problematic. But for the moment, uh, definitely, we are able to stick to that and we don't want to change this. So this is one side of the coin. The other side of the coin, I think, is a different one, which is, uh, of course, if you try to correlate uh, where which countries are very successful and also uh, how, they, how much money they spend, there is quite strong correlation between the amount of money a country invests. But there are other aspects which have to do with the environment, which is, uh, environment is not just money, it's also whether people are properly supported, whether they have uh, given enough freedom, 
uh, whether they are given uh, actually a lot of uh, flexibility in the way they can use the money, which is a different issue. And sometimes uh, it's not an easy issue because depending on the laws you have in the country, particularly in terms of employment, uh, employing people can be simple or complicated. I'm coming from France, so I'm talking about something I know quite well. <laughs> and, uh, and so actually, uh, this dimension, for, in particular for young researchers who want to develop a team around them, is quite important. So it's not just money. It's, uh, so if you are asking the question of which countries are most uh, successful, Definitely for the, moment, for the moment, the country which is the most success, successful both in numbers of ERC grants, but also in the capacity of attracting uh, people from outside the country is the UK, clearly. But if you go back now and uh, look more at the size of the countries, then uh, the countries which are most successful are Israel, Switzerland, or Netherlands. Netherlands very soon will celebrate its 520s. So Netherlands is one-fourth France, so it would mean France should have uh, for 2,000 grantees. We're not yet at 900. So it shows that Netherlands have been doing extremely well. And if you talk to researchers there, actually, the, uh, the quite often they feel that maybe the budget is not what they hope, but the flexibility and the support given by institution is remarkable. So I think there is always this combination between two things. Of course, if there is no research going on in the country, no support for research, there is no way you can yeah, be successful. Have have but at the same time, being supportive, being open to people coming and de developing new activities it makes a big difference. Yeah. So we have a, a research bill coming up in Sweden and for the first time that's actually going to take a 10 year view, uh, which is very exciting. Um, if you were the Minister of Research of Sweden, what would you make sure that it contained, given your experience? <laughs> Okay. Well, I think uh, it's an unfair question. <laughs> but, uh, well, for me, that's one thing I'm, I keep repeating. Of course, I'm in charge in some way of a very specific program at the European Commission. As you know, the, the program of the European Commission has been built uh, as a, for the first time with a kind of a quite consistent approach, having three pillars. One on excellent science, one on the industrial leadership, one on... Uh, on societal challenges, and we have been talking about health a lot uh, for very good reasons. And I think this approach, which is a global one, I think look, looking at the various components, uh, that is putting together and making sure that the various components are reasonably, uh, I mean, a reasonable support, that is, typically for excellent science, bottom-up is very important. That is, the researchers have the initiative of submitting what they feel is the most appropriate. Of course, for industrial leadership, it's quite different. I mean, the stakeholders are different stakeholders, and then other approaches need to be uh, taken. And this time, for example, the European Commission has put, in a, lot of, has put a lot of effort towards SMEs, because uh, it's known that in Europe, SMEs don't develop as easily as in other parts of the world, particularly the US. But also for social, for um, societal challenges, I think uh, it's a mixture of uh, bottom-up and uh, top-down. But of course, the people who set uh, the objectives are, and you have seen a lot this uh, this a lot this afternoon, uh, are more people typically uh, representing the population. That is the political agenda. So for me, concerning your very specific question, I think a good balance and, uh, in particular, a prospective view on things is very very important. So, of course, if you come up with a plan in which there is no room for bottom-up research, you're in trouble, I think. If you, in the same way, I mean, there are definitely some uh, priorities that the government wants to address for very good reasons, either political or because they feel that for the future it's going to be decisive, then you, you have to concentrate some efforts. So I think it's more the of all balance, which uh, looks to me as the very critical feature. And of course, as a scientist myself, I always feel that uh, the first one which tends to be forgotten is the part which is bottom-up and uh, freedom left to, to research.